Hello everybody, my name is Lucas. I just got back from NAMM 2023 in Anaheim, um, California. I'm going to give you a big review of the NAMM show itself. I've been there a couple times, but this is the first time I've actually reviewed the show itself. So I'm going to tell you some stuff I liked, I'm going to tell you some stuff I didn't like, and I'm going to tell you some of my personal travel stories, and I'm going to tie that into things that need to change. And If this is, if this is your first time here, or if you've been here before, you really should subscribe. I do gear tutorials. Um, I've got a couple of NAM videos coming down the way. I do give away some time to time. I don't want you to miss any of that cool stuff. So make sure you are subscribed. We're going to be doing a lot of talking today. So if you want to put the video on 2X here on YouTube, I don't mind at all. And with that, let's go. NAM this year was held in June. This is the first time ever that I'm aware of that Winter NAM was held in June because the Winter NAM is usually in Anaheim and the Summer NAM is usually in Nashville. So the summer NAM is is also a lot smaller than the winter NAM. Um, a lot of manufacturers will bring their stuff over to Anaheim. They'll just go to winter NAM and completely skip summer NAM. So NAM this year was uh, kind of uh, size wise in between summer NAM and winter NAM. So some of the stuff I saw there. So I went there with the Rev guys. Uh, big shout out to them. I've been able to go there a couple times, big, uh, a few times to them because of them. They had their booth and they shared their booth with Aristides Guitars out of the netherlands um they had a really cool headless nine string guitar there i checked that out and so for some of the booths that i liked um th that was a booth uh, two notes was there two notes was right across the street from them they have this really cool genome thing coming out which is like it's going to replace world of sound and you're going to have amps in there it, it's it's wild and another cool thing that I liked at NAMM was at the Two Notes booth and at the Rev booth, they had a James Tyler guitar. That was the first time I ever played one of those. They're a lot like Tom Anderson. They play fantastic. They're one of the, it's one of the best guitars I've ever played. Uh, check them out. I'll put a link down in the description if you want to check them out. And then from NAMM, right across from the NAMM booth, they had a Cream Guitars. It was the first time, it was the launch of their brand pretty much. And they had this cool little chair with like, mannequins with like speakers for heads that a lot of people like play their guitars and took pictures with it was kind of one of the bigger attractions in Hulti so for those who don't know the way name let alone the way name is laid out Hulti is like a lot of the guitar stuff and then CD and A is kind of like you know your drums and your woodwinds and you it's around it's divided by like that and the whole point of name is to for dealers to meet with um, manufacturers so you know you can uh, meet with your artists talk about cool stuff that's going on you meet with new dealers you know stuff like that it's it's a networking business thing is what it is i mainly just go there as kind of like part of a media from a youtube channel right so some of the other cool stuff i liked was right down the way from rev not too far from them there was the ernie ball booth it was a lot smaller than it was past years but tosin abasi had his his kaizen guitar there which i think i think that's how you say it, because one of the enemies in bleach was aizen and it's basically aizen with a can in front so i call it kaizen he had his guitar there it's a collaboration between him and music man that was there they had the eight string majesties which was there. that guitar's a lot lighter in person uh, it was just cool to see it's not that something really new but they had some new finishes and um, stuff out for that and then um i've been this booth it was still big like it, it always was so they had the they have some acoustics there it's the alt acoustics it's an acoustic body with a rg um like neck and head which is really cool they had some fans fred bdb basses they had some of their headless basses there they had the bass uh new signature bass from mike d'antoni from kill switch engage that was really cool vi had his um hydra three-headed guitar monster guitar there that was really cool. We had new guitars from Andy Timmons. We had new guitars from Joe Satriani and Nita Strauss. And from Jake Bowen from Periphery. And then this was actually all the Japanese models. They were locked up, so they're, you know, they're very expensive. Most of the time, they'll just show you the Indo, uh, Indonesian, -made, Indonesian or Korean-made guitars there. But um, they actually had the Japanese ones that ones were there, which, which was really nice. And let me look. Do we have anything more from the Ibanez booth? I think that's it. I'm looking at some of my videos right now. That was it. Now let's move on to the... Um, oh, before we jump to the second floor, a really cool thing that I liked was the Abasi booth. The Abasi booth was there. Should have just stayed there the whole time and filmed stuff. Uh, they had their new double cutaway models that they released. And the Abasi booth has come such a very long way because I remember the first name they showed up. 
they were still setting up on the first day on Thursday, and some of their guitars were like kind of rough the very first time they were there. But now their guitars are pretty good from what I'm hearing. Um, I should have went play some. I didn't. I don't know why. I'm such an idiot. Uh, but they've come a long way, and th their booth was one of the best. I am to tell you the truth. It was very good to see. Very happy. Moving to the second floor. So that's how way Nam works. You have halls A through A through D, and then you have a second floor and a third floor, and there's different stuff. So in the second floor, ESP Ltd. Takaman and Ingle were all uh, in one room upstairs. I'm really glad they came because they had some really cool stuff. Uh, ESP always knocks it out of the park, and I'm glad they came and kept their big booth. By the way, I caught a little bit of Nam track, so if I sound weird or just cuts because I'm coughing, I still have my sinuses are going crazy. Anyway, they had ESP had this really cool like Metallica like um, display outside, which was really nice to see. And then whenever you walk in. There's like all these crazy finishes that they normally have. Um, I took like a minute video of all of them. I'll probably put that in a big montage um, up on YouTube so you can see all the stuff I videoed. And then they had some angle amps up in there and they actually had a stage and stuff where people could take pictures and do performances, which was missing a lot from them. And they had, you know, some of their new models, some of their older models. So the ESP booth was upstairs. It was nice and big, which was really nice to see. Uh, and then another cool place upstairs was the Yamaha booth. Because going to there, they had like this wall panel that was like flat that you could play. They had that. And then in the booth itself, they um, they had like a piano and people, a piano spinning in a circle and they had people performing. Yeah, I want to make so much stuff, guys. Like they literally make like saxophones, guitars, pianos. They make outboard engines for boats. They make motorcycles. They make so much stuff. I know it's different parts of the company, but it all has the same name. So the Yamaha booth. That one was really nice. And then, like, they have, like, the boutique guitar section, which it's, like, um, really, like, special made guitars, um, kind of, like, high-end stuff. It's it's really smaller. Um, OD Guitars from Israel, they had a Lego guitar that was there. Um, they And OD Guitars himself had a booth. And it was all kind of other wild and kind of cool, crazy guitars in there. So that was um, good to see that that was all um kept there some of my favorite things from them was um the abasi booth like i talked about um abasi's guitar with music man the kaizen i'm gonna do a whole video on the kaizen of how it actually feels it hasn't uh, been released yet there's no pricing on it yet i can't even really pre-order yet because i tried but i'm gonna do a detailed list uh you know video of how it actually feels because i don't really think anyone's done a video on that yet so that is all of the cool stuff that i liked so let me talk about some stuff that i didn't like well that, that kind of like made me sad so nan this year was a lot lot smaller this is the first time nan has happened since 2020 so it's been two and a half years so holdies mainly where i spend most of my time at nan that's where like a lot of the guitar stuff is right this year holdy is where we got our badges most of the time to get your badge the badge was like in the very very front of Nam, but this time it was in Hall D. And they did it in Hall D because that was how much space they had left over. So, so many brands didn't come. They like had a massive hole in Hall D. So, even after they put like we're getting our badges, there was more extra space there, which that made me really sad because it's like a lot of my favorite uh, brands weren't there. So, but but I but I get it because you know, Armsby wasn't there, Fender and Gibson wasn't there. Fender said they're never coming to an in-person trade show again. So if you don't have no Fender, you don't have no Presonus, you don't have no EVH, you don't have no Jackson, which, I mean, man, that's a... I'm always in those booths every name because they're one of the best ones. PRS wasn't there. Ormsby wasn't there. I think I said that. They're from Australia. Um, the other ones are... Mayonnaise wasn't there. They're from Poland. I mean, you had a lot of, like, big hitters that weren't there, which made me really sad because I, I have friends at some of these places, and I really like trying out... And seeing a lot of stuff, I really wanted to try out the EVH uh, Iconic this year. That would have been really cool. PV also was there, which PV's booth was kind of sad last time when I went in it. But, I mean, PV wasn't there. I mean, you, I even came across some booths that people bought and they didn't even come. I don't know what happened. Uh, I don't know if they just decided not to come, if their stuff didn't show up or what happened. But you just had empty booths there, which... Nam was so small this year, and it didn't have like a lot of people there. I literally saw everything I wanted to see in four and four hours, maybe. Normally, it takes me like two days. It took me four hours to see everything I wanted to see. Granted, I 
it's my fault because I should have went to more talks. I should have hung out at that bossy booth more because a lot of cool people came to there. I could have filmed some stuff, could have tried some stuff. Just it was kind of a busy booth, so I didn't kind of just want to be, you know, a little lurker there. Even though I kind of had friends there, I just didn't kind of want to be a lurker. Um, so now that that happened, let me talk about my travels, and then I will tie that into why I think a lot of people weren't there. So I got, I flew from. Um, New Orleans airport, the Louis Armstrong airport to um, John Wayne, which is in um, Southern California. I had a layover in Houston, which was fine. Um, I don't like going to LAX because LAX is really busy. And I just don't really care for it. So I flew into John Wayne. When I got to John Wayne, um, I had a hole in my bag. Some kind of way I got caught on a belt or something and had a massive hole in my bag. The only thing I saved my stuff was this old cardboard that came with my luggage. I just kept it in there. It bore a hole, and I went to the United Desk. They gave me a a new bag. Um, I actually ran into the guys from Premier Guitar there, and they had actually lost all their luggage. But they ended up getting it back. I talked to them at the show, which was great. So I got a new bag, and weather there was actually nice because when I walk out the airport, it's the summer. I mean, summer in Louisiana is brutal. It's hot. It's muggy. It's disgusting. I thought that's how it was going to be. It wasn't like that at all. Uh, in the shade, I ride outside the airport. It was fine. Uh, it was actually kind of cool, which blew my mind. Uh, I mean, yeah, and, and the my hotel that I got is was very far north of the airport and a little far north of the show. So the show was in Anaheim. Um, my hotel was in La Habra because it's kind of like by my friend's house. So I got I got that so we could hang out. And it was this little like one bed hotel room with like one chair. It was very tiny. It did the job, but it kind of made me depressed because I was in there by myself. And it was just like small and I couldn't really get comfortable and I was sleeping because they only gave me two pillows and they were kind of flat. So I had to like use my dirty clothes to like get the pillow up. But anyway, that's boring stuff. My Uber to get up there was $57. My Uber to get back to the airport was 117 I looked at it. I looked at it. It was like rush hour. When I was, it was like 8 in the morning. I looked at it. It was 66 I put my phone down to do some more stuff. I picked it back up. It jumped to 111. I was like, oh my God. And this is with me. Um, I scheduled in advance. And the Uber came between 20, um, excuse me, the Lyft. Lyft. I use Lyft. I don't use Uber. It came between 20 and 40 minutes, right? And I saved 66 bucks. So it would have cost me almost $200. Now, granted, it was like a 20, 30 minute ride. But that's just how expensive things have got. My plane ticket has has doubled. Last, last time when I went in 2020, it was 250 to fly out there. So that was great. So my ticket was 500 my hotel room was 800 so I, before i even said foot in california i was 800 dollars deep that's usually the high end of how much any trip cost me with ubers and food with lifts excuse me lifts and food i it would cost me like 1100 bucks which is fine because most of the, i say fine but most of the time like i'll go there and i'll film performances and i'll film stuff and i'll put them on my channel and they do really well and then so i'll recoup some of that money back but Having it in, in June, almost pretty much all of the performers were on the road and they were touring. And there were just not a lot of artists there. I mean, there were some there, but in general, like, and there also wasn't performances because Ernie Ball's booth was smaller. They didn't have a stage. They had a stage in the past. Mayonnaise wasn't there. They've had performances there. Fisherman's booth, Fisherman and Samar Duncan just had these little bitty like cubicles in the front for meetings. So they didn't have any big booths and they didn't want to do performances. So you didn't have any of those performances there either so that was a lot less stuff for me to film i actually ran into one of my friends that he runs a big youtube channel and he films a lot of stuff and he told me he wasn't filming anything which kind of you know it, it put it was in the same boat as me i mean i know i'm a mic i'm super tiny in a microcosm but if he wasn't filming stuff there like you know something is wrong so he he didn't even film anything i mean he filmed like a couple of like tiktok things but he didn't like film any interviews with anybody because he's done that a lot in the past so this brings me to why why i think a lot of manufacturers weren't there because it would have cost them so much because so if you see say if you're coming from poland or australia right if you're coming from somewhere overseas you got to book all those plane tickets you got to bring all your people there you got to make sure all your gear gets there and NAM was only three days this year it was friday saturday sunday and they chopped off thursday so you normally have that thursday in there so they were shorter this year. Things were so much more expensive than what they were two years ago, and like I don't know if a lot of you, pe- if a lot of you guys know this, but if you're renting a spot in Nam, it goes by the square footage. 
So if you some if you you know, and it costs a lot of money. So like Finger and Gibson would rent out like entire suites on the third and second floor, and I'm sure they were paying like you know ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars just for these little booths. I mean, just for the whole big rooms, but. I don't know how much they charged this year, but I'm pretty sure they might have went up on their prices, which is why Fender and Gibson backed out. They're like, this is at a stupid time. We don't want to go. It's really expensive, and we're not going to get out, anything out of it, so we're not going. And I fear this is what's going to happen going forward because it was so small this year, and then the next NAM is, is in April. I mean, April is better. I understand why it wasn't in April in twenty this year, in 2022, because of the special virus. It delayed a lot of things, and California had a lot of special stuff going on with the special virus, so they had to push it to June. But I mean, in April, you you know you might have more artists there, but it's only eight months away, so I don't know how much new stuff a lot of these manufacturers and brands are gonna have when it comes um, comes to April time. So Nam in April might be even smaller than what it was now. I really don't know. Nam's one of my favorite places in the world. I hope they make changes to bring more brands in. Um, it's super fun to go. Go if you ever get a chance. There's so much cool stuff there to look at. Um, this year was definitely a down year, man. Because there's a lot of... There was not a lot of people there. Like, Boss Pedals also wasn't there. There was just so much of, like, the cool people, that you, cool brands that you depend on to be there, to have cool stuff, like, wasn't there. And it was a mass. It was a massive letdown for me. I mean, I got to see my friends. You know, I got to see some cool stuff. I'm really grateful that I went. But I'm definitely not going again. I don't see myself going in again in April. Not if I'm going to be paying that much money and not a lot of, you know, not a lot of brands are going to go. And because, you know, I have people who are, I'm friends with these brands and they weren't there, so I didn't get to see them. And I understand why I didn't come because I know cost had a lot to do with it. I think NAM needs to make, the NAM organization themselves, they need to make some changes. They need to be a little bit more organized. They need, to, I understand why I was in June this year. I feel like they were between a rock and a hard place, but I know a lot of, Brands have had issues with the NAM organization itself because some of them feel like they're bullies and they charge a lot for the spots on the floor. Uh, this is just stuff that I've heard. I'm just kind of reiterating to you stuff that I've heard. Uh, and the NAM organization is acting like a bully. They 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 need to make some changes. They need to get things right with brands. They need to, to keep bringing them in. Uh, they need to be better organized because um, this NAM is, one of my friends told me, is this NAM is really going to determine how things are going to go going forward. So uh, hopefully April... It's at the same size or a little bit bigger. I just, I, I don't know what's going to happen, to, t- to tell you the truth. Because um, I want to see more of my friends. Um, I want, uh, I had a few YouTuber friends who didn't show up. Like, a lot, a lot, it was very, it just felt very empty this year. That's just kind of like the feeling that I got from it. I mean, I got to see some of my friends. I got to have fun. But, I mean, more friends is better in any, in any con, and most of the time. But, you know, I didn't get to see a lot of them there. And it made me kind of sad. And it, it, this NAM was just okay for me this year. It was one of the worst NAM, not say worst NAM just, but it was one of the more down ones that I've ever been to. But I'm not trying to make it like sound like I'm grateful that I, that I got to go. I am grateful that I got to go, but it's like I can't see myself spending that much money each time to be disappointed like that. Um, so I just have to reevaluate. I don't see myself going April. I may or may not. I really don't know. But guys... Um, I know this video wasn't all that entertaining or exciting. I just kind of wanted to get my thoughts out. Um, if you've watched the full video, thank you for sticking around. I really do um, appreciate it. Um, I got a few more stuff coming about them, and I got some more regular um, videos coming. So make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss those. Like I said, if you watch this whole video, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you in the next one.